<laughs> he is, after all, a political scientist out there. Um, not, not every experiment that you want to do in the atmosphere n needs to be a long-term measurement of changes in forcing. I mean, for example, there are serious questions about how would you introduce the material. You, you may want to introduce it as a, uh, uh, in uh, uh, a gaseous or liquid form. You may, and so you need to, to look at how spray technology works. Uh, and, and so there are a bunch of things that you could do on really quite small scale. Uh, there are folks talking about trying to do synchronous detection studies. So far, the numbers I've seen suggest that the forcing levels you require may be fairly high. But the, the notion of synchronous detection is that if you, if you put stuff in at a phase that's, that's, that's not in sync with, with the diurnal, or I mean with the uh, annual cycle, that you might be able to pull a signal out from the noise. But it's precisely thinking seriously about some of this stuff that needs to happen, and, and so far it hasn't. On the parking lots, I've never run the numbers, but I, I know somebody who claims to have run the numbers that says uh, white roofs and uh, white parking lots don't appear to have a big effect, but I should, uh, I should run the numbers myself. As for leadership, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew. It's a little hard to see. Um, and. Uh, uh, but, you know, you could say, if you want to be on the upside, um, when, when, when there really are emergency situations, usually leaders do emerge. Uh, I don't think they're out there in any... And if you're talking about globally credible readership on this question, it ain't there at the moment. Yeah, I wrote an editorial in Science, gee, a long time ago now, over a decade ago, called Managing Carbon from the Bottom Up, that argued that we were putting altogether too much effort into global, into trying to negotiate a global regime to which everyone would salute and sign up, that, that a far more plausible route forward was to get various parts of the world to each decide, it, to decide this is a serious problem, we've got to do something about it, and then gradually to uh, coalesce these different regimes. And so, you know, in this country, we see California trying to do reasonably serious stuff, and we have a few others around the world who are trying to do reasonably serious stuff. I, I think maybe a little less attention on trying to negotiate a single all-encompassing agreement that has real teeth and impact, and a little more work here at home on sort of getting out front uh, would be uh, uh, a good place to start. And so, for example, getting a half dozen uh, uh, 800 megawatt coal-fired power plants built with, with uh, carbon uh, sequestration, doing a much bigger program of uh, nuclear rejuvenation and re uh, renewal than we have, and a whole variety of really going in a serious way after uh, 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 energy efficiency. You'll notice that we're looking at a whole slew of incandescent lights here. Uh, in a new Leeds building, um, <laughs> the, working on a bunch of those things uh, would be uh, uh, probably uh, very desirable. Um, I, we need to wrap this up, unfortunately. Let me just, uh, two points. Some people think that the Copenhagen Accord actually represents the beginning of that bottom-up that you're suggesting, this putting commitments on the table. Who knows? I mean, it's another hour debate, which we won't go into here. Um, I, I want to thank you both. Uh, for this. It's the uh, beginning of a really important conversation that we all need to be having on this issue. And I want to thank the audience for some really good questions. And good night. And, and I'm supposed to also remind everybody that this was on the record. That's what my cheat sheet here <laughs> says. Except for my crack about an Except edit. Except for that one, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do not record that. <laughs>